Finish. All right. I'm just gonna walk you through these. through this really quickly um, mm. just to explain it to you so usually when I work with dogs especially our high drive dogs that needed lots more help tactile help all that sort of stuff especially once they get into those mind frames of like super high arousal and they pop into their like limbic brain so they can't really think a lot so mm. sometimes they need a bit more help than a dog that's more calm and you know collected and all this sort of stuff so I know we briefly mentioned it but I actually skipped the phase okay um, so we start off with luring, exactly what you're doing. So you're luring into these positions. So I want you to think those pictures, if you think like standing is full paws, locked out, sitting, butt on floor, drop, elbows on floor, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So you start with the luring first, which is your food. The next stage there is you actually do finger pressure. And then lure. The third stage, because it builds, is you go leash pressure that goes to finger pressure mm -hmm. okay for dogs that are like him where we actually use the remote collar which is actually really nice you then go from there the fourth one you go working range taps if you will to leash pressure and usually after that you can add your voice commands if you want to most people will say you keep, like because you're going to do a lot of this stuff and and the reason for it is sometimes when let's say i'm in an area like zeus right next to me uh maybe i'm sitting down something's happening it's too loud talking to her it's not going to work and i just so i just touch her on the bum for the sit and she sits mm -hmm. so i don't have to tell her anything or maybe i'm standing maybe i'm next to a road Again, it's very loud, so I just go leash pressure up, she sits down. It's just a really nice way to sometimes communicate with dogs on a more tactile level, if that makes sense. So technically speaking, vocal is great to have, but that's not the first thing that they focus on. So visual, tactile cues are more important. And sometimes for us, it is better, especially if you've got a dog like ours. So, when you're working through this, it takes a lot longer, but you've got so much to work with and it's more reliable. Mm -hmm. So the dogs love it. They absolutely love it. Um, usually if with the remote collar, you work then with your taps. So tap, tap, tap until the dog does the actual thing. Stop. And then after that, corrections actually come in. So if you wanted to add your, you can add your vocal command anywhere you want, really. How's he gonna know what to do if, if I just start tapping him though? That's where your vocal command comes in. Oh. So I'm saying like you can do it anywhere. Yeah. Usually when dogs, when we teach um, the dogs because you're, they, they go lure. So you go finger pressure, right? It's a sit, is on the bump. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll just write that down for you actually. So finger pressure is sit, goes on bump. Oops, bump. Mm -hmm. Your stand, it's usually just like rib, rib cage, sternum kind of thing, depending on how short the dog is. So sternum. And then your drop is shoulder blades. All right? So what you do, the dog learns, you go touch on the bum, lure. Touch on the bum, lure. Touch on the bum, he'll sit before you lure, because he's anticipating. So once you've got that like really good and you just touch and he goes yeah i know this yeah i know this yeah i know this because it's a cue it's a tactile cue mm -hmm. he knows what the touch is so then you go all right now i'm going to challenge you i'm going to go leash pressure up for a sit and i touch your butt and he's going oh i know what that touch means so you don't actually need 
the vocal because what happens there is he says, but I understand the leash. So for a sit, from his point of view, I always look from the dog's point of view, leash goes up. For the stand, leash goes bit forward. For the drop, the leash goes a bit down. So once he knows that, because he understands that, he's like, yeah, but I know finger pressure. And you go, okay, what about leash pressure and touch? And he goes, oh, well, okay. So, that, so leash pressure now that way. Okay, I get it. So that's the sit. Once you do that, so you go tap, tap, leash up at the same time. He goes, because he's like, I know what that means. I know what the leash pressure up means. Mm -hmm. And he goes, wait a minute. This is very similar to what we're doing. I just need to get rid of this annoyance. Oh, great. Yeah. So you get a dog that's so much more compliant and learns that to be compliant within two seconds. It's very good. It's a lot of tactile feedback and it really helps dogs like him. That's how he understands when you add the tap because you go, you start with a tap and he, he focuses because you'll go, what, what, right? And then you go, leash pressure down. And he goes, I remember that. And the, lead, and the taps go away and he goes, ha, ha. Mm. yes. And usually what will happen is if you're with a dog like him, you might go a little higher than normal, like in working range. I'm not talking about correction, I'm talking working range. So you want to be medium because you want him to go three taps. I'm going to try and do them two, you know, yeah. like that. Yeah. So that's kind of the process. Okay. And then from there it becomes very simple. So you go, you can then start saying the word. So you go sit as you tap leash pressure up. He goes, yeah, I know that. Of course we already know he knows that vocal command. But once you go sit and there's no taps, that's when that correction comes in. You have two seconds to comply. Boom. Mm -hmm. So it's a longer process, but you have more. So when I'm in, let's say at the vet, so Niva comes up, the vet asks us, like you can see she's stretched, she's like, oh my soul. Like, she's like, oh my goodness, it's Beryl. And she gets so excited. Like talking to her is, has no effect. So I'll go into her collar where she has a little leash and then I'll just pull slightly down and she, she drops down. And so I can have a discussion with the vet and get my dog to just chill like go into a drop and just hmm. and a lot of people love that because they're like wow what'd you do I'm like, nothing, nothing. I just had a you know, telepathic discussion with my dog mm -hmm. yeah well, he definitely needs that for the bit yeah so it it adds all these things now last time all I did is I actually told you we'd do leash pressure straight away we wouldn't do finger pressure so it's up to you if you wanted to do that extra step it doesn't bother me for me I was thinking more of a practical sense especially if you're walking with him. So when I used to walk with the puppies, so I get close to the verge um, or the, the curb, and there's all these cars moving and it's loud, you know, like, oh, sorry, I've got a bunch of weirdos. And I tell the dog sit, but one, they're not listening because it's loud. Two, they're not looking at me. So when I, I know the leash is attached. So the moment I would walk up, i go, and my dog would sit automatically. Because they just go like, okay, I feel the leash is going up. If I sit, it goes away. Done. So I never, I didn't really look at my dog, mm -hmm. um, and it looks really impressive. Mm -hmm. you know, so when you start moving and the leash goes forward, they stand, and let's go. Mm -hmm. So I cued my dog with my visual and verbal and tactile cues. Yeah. And it, some people really want a dog to like make eye contact, look at you all the time. There are a lot of dogs who struggle with that. As a, when I was training the personal protection dogs, it didn't make sense to me because you need a dog that's looking everywhere else, but still responding. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the lure is for you guys to work on that proprioception and kind of like a dance. You know, you're working on your synchronization. You'd understand that with different drills and movements and cues. Mm -hmm. And then you're working on different cues, like finger pressure, if you can touch him. You know, like, let's say you're watching TV and the dog's like, perks up right in front of you. You go. It barks fucking crazily whenever there's a dog on TV still. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, that's one of the corrections, because we haven't started doing correction with him yet. No. When he gets into that barking. Which is phase. what I'm going to give you to do this week. Oh yeah, next Friday. Cause, yeah, because it's just like, fucking hell. And that's the problem that we'll makes just be people put have. Him in a crate. Yeah. 
And most people are like, oh, I have to tolerate this. And I'm like, you have to tolerate it because mm -hmm. once we do it, it becomes very effective once the dog understands. Yep. So managing at the moment always learning. Yeah. Okay. So you, you're, you're, I personally, I, I go with all of them. I just do. It's, it's more effective. Yeah. Um, it's more impressive to a lot of people, but you feel like you've got a bit more.